the Hall of Justice, mutated by toxic wings. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to another one of Talking Games Game of the Year lookbacks. Um, this is Justin's Game of the Year. Yes, it is. Transistor. Justin, tell us a little about Transistor and why it's your Game of the Year. It was the best game that came out this year. That's not true. It definitely is true. Transistor is this uh, just amazing game that pulled me in uh, what do you want to do now, right? in a huge way. Um, it's got a little bit of everything. Uh, it has really, really interesting gameplay combat. Uh, looking at it, it is beautiful. Uh, it has incredible, beautiful, outstanding music. And it has a story that's um, very interesting. Uh, it, it takes a bit of digging uh, to really find out what's going on in this world. But when you take the time to learn, it's, uh, it's a really cool story. Was that a dig at Jackie? <laughs> Everything I say is a dig at Jackie. Uh, right now, I, uh, I haven't booted the game up in a couple of months since I got the Platinum. Uh, but this is an area in the game. Um, it's called the Back Door. And they take us to these challenge rooms um, where we could do things as just uh, practice. So let's, just, let's go into here really quick. Is and, there sound coming out of the controller? Yes. Okay. Uh, so I was like, wow, your headphones are really loud, Justin. <laughs> You can choose to have uh, the transistor, which is uh, kind of your lover who was murdered by this giant sword and his essence got put in the sword. You could choose to have his voice come out of the controller, which is the way that I liked to play it. That's gotcha. the best thing about this game. That's the best thing about this game, is watching your character carry around a giant sword while you're carrying around a controller that is speaking. Uh, <laughs> I love that bit. So uh, these... I think that's I think that's damning praise from Jackie. <laughs> we don't the, pay we don't really pay attention to what Jackie says. The best part of the says. game is that the controller talks to you. Anyway, right, tell me about the functions, Justin. Yeah, let's let's talk a little bit about the functions. Uh, functions are your attacks, um, and you'll get these by defeating enemies along the way. And uh, since this is actually a practice room, we're actually, this isn't a good example of it now that I'm looking at it. So please install more functions. Okay, so it's not gonna let me get out. Nope. So here we go. So this is what it would actually look like uh, when you're looking at your menu in the game. Uh, so you're gonna choose uh, a set of functions that you wanna use. So we look, uh, so this will harm and disrupt nearby targets. So you know, let's just, let's just mess around. So let's grab this guy, we're gonna put him here. And then we'll grab this guy, bounce, we'll put him to circle. Let's grab the help function, we'll put it on triangle, that's where I always kept it. And let's do cull, we'll put him at square. Now what I could also do, if I'm thinking correctly, was we can take some of these and add them into um, these other sub functions. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding weapons on top of weapons or attacks on top of attacks. And we'll see that anywhere I put it, it's going to add a different effect um, with different, uh, different uh, functions. So if I put this one on top of, I'm actually using a copy on a copy, which is a trophy. So I'm going to be using the bounce plus bounce. And now it'll let me use the bounce function more. But if I were to take bounce and put it on cull, it's going to do something different. And you can mix and match as much as you want up until your memory is filled on the left-hand side. So we'll just do a couple of these things here. We'll do some random ones. Get that thing all maxed out. Uh, where's some of the expensive guys? We don't know what these are all doing. Let's do help here. We're all nearly full. Now we could put them, now what we could also do is they give us four side functions here, uh, which are now because I've maxed out memory, I can't use. Uh, but those will give me like an overall bonus that's outside of combat. Mm -hmm. So enemies will die 5% faster, d depending on what I'm doing. So right. let's back out of this. And uh, so it's, it's looks real enough. here's an enemy. Now you could play like this and just use uh, and just play as, as like a, as a top-down game. But what you really want to do, where was it? 
by hitting R2, we're going to stop time, and I'm going to be able to plan out my attack. So uh, it turns into almost like a real-time strategy game. So like, I'm going to look. Now, I can only move as much as that top bar lets me mm -hmm. before I runs out and it's going to push me back. But I can rewind by hitting L2. So I want to see. Let's see. Let's, let's get this guy. Now, this is going to bounce to him, and now I'm going to see their health go down. Now I'm going to use X. Do it one more time. And hit R2, and it's going to play out. These guys will die. Nope, not dead. Yeah. I'm gonna call up my buddy, my friends, my little dog guy. And then he'll go and he'll he'll attack people for me. So this is just a practice room where you can mix and match your abilities however you want to do to find really interesting combinations. The, 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 the amazing thing about Transistor is there is something like a trillion different combinations that you can use, and that's trillion with a T. It's an actual number that Supergiant put out that you can mix and match all these combinations in so many variations. And by doing that, you're going to find new ways to play the game. In our Game of the Year discussions, I was saying that I kind of just forced my way through the game the first time without really understanding the system that the game wanted me to use. Mm -hmm. And then when I actually thought about it and, and tried learning by going into those practice rooms... I can do their worst. Let's stop this. So this guy is keeping me from seeing what's around me. So let's just get rid of him. What did I just see? Oh, uh, okay. So obviously we're talking about the combat, and um, the combat has a lot of variations and a lot of stacking abilities, mm -hmm. and and if if you allow it to be, is extremely complicated and rewarding in the way that you, the way that you use it. Exactly. Um. Obviously, you, you get, people are watching this. They can see by the way the game looks that it's a gorgeous-looking game. The art is beautiful. Um, the design of the world is gorgeous. But uh, talk to me about story, Justin. Story. So, <clears throat> Transistor is this interesting game where it's not really going to let us... As you see, I, I completed whatever area I was in. And it's now going to let me pick a new function that I just got, because I leveled up. So even after platinuming, you're still getting new things? Yeah, you could keep going. Mm -hmm. it, it, I don't think that it ever really stops. So it doesn't really tell us what's going on with the story. You, you're a, you are a singer, a nightclub singer, who has her voice stolen. And you kind of find out that it's with these characters... Uh, that are trying to control the world. It almost seems like we're in a computer program. That's the way that I interpreted the game. Um, and you're on a, a mission because your boyfriend, significant other, you walk out of the nightclub after you have your voice stolen and you can only hum. You find him impaled with this giant sword, the transistor. And his consciousness is put into the sword. And now you are on a hunt to go find this cabal uh, that is responsible for what's going on in the world. That's the basic gist of the game. And you're trying to hunt down these four or five, uh, what turn out to be bosses, and uh, you want revenge. And uh, they're trying to do certain things in the world that are damaging to the world itself. Uh, so you're kind of trying to save the world as it's ending and get your revenge at the same time. Mm. Let's just be quiet for a second and let this music play. It's very, very pretty. It's uh, my favorite part about the game. Yeah, I mean, the, the music, music is absolutely incredible. I can't exactly remember which part. Oh, I'm supposed to get rid of this. It's calling them up. That must be how they get here. And you can, you can hear that your significant other comes through and it's just... Awesome. Well, no, no. They, they can't hear it because it's coming through your controller uh, and well, not through the speakers. It's kind of loud. <laughs> uh, so my mic is probably picking it up. Yeah, probably. Um, but, I mean, uh, Transistor has just incredible music. Um, I mean, that, that was probably one of my favorite things about the game as well. I mean, my overall favorite thing about the game is just the combat system and how a person like me who does not play real-time strategy games could get so pulled into learning different variations because uh, certain certain uh bosses will you could just 
whack at them forever, or you could take them out rather quickly if you learn the right way to do it. Yeah, I mean, to be, to, it, it's got a little bit more element of turn-based yes. in it, a strategy because you're able to stop time and do what you need to do. It has a meter on it, obviously, for what you can do, but it plays you know, similar to something like, um, like Fire Emblem or um, Valkyrie Chronicles, where you have like a meter that you have, in his, you have like action points, and you're really using those action points till they're up, and then you guys will do what they're going to do. Um, but it mixes that and the real-time stuff to be very unique uh, in that way. I mean, my main issue with the game was just that I feel like it... The, the complexity that exists um, within the game is sometimes, it, it, on first blush, like as you said, is difficult to get to at times. So you end up playing it, like, like you mentioned, kind of more... Um, Bluntly, more power, power through it kind of way, and I feel like that takes away from the enjoyment I think, uh, of the game. I think what they really needed to do was to introduce those back doors where you're completing uh, challenges, because one of like the challenges will put you in a position where you're going to be like they're going to preset things for you, and so you're not going to be able to use the weapons that you're used to. And by doing that, it forces you to learn different ways to play. And if they had done that originally right off the bat, I think it would have helped so much more if they would have made it available from like the menu system where it was mm -hmm. like try these out, like it'll definitely help you. Yeah, I mean, I think it's I think it's I think it's commendable that they don't hold the combat back from you. I, I, that you can basically dive in once you start and start doing combinations as quickly as you get processes. Uh, yes. But I think because of that, it leaves people a little bit behind. And I think it does the game a disservice to itself because I think it hides away the true enjoyment of the game. And Jack, you've been shaking your head while we're talking. Yeah, no, that was my exact problem with this game is that, um, yeah, I understand it's extremely complex, but unless you make a point of uh, of doing that you don't actually need to I got through this game without learning any of this like half of this is new to me but I finished this game so yeah I definitely agree with you Justin like finding a way to uh, level that stuff up as you go through the game to force you to use it is uh, would be a better option I, you know and I like the fact that they don't feel the need to hold your hand and force you through tutorials but I think there's got to be some kind of middle ground and you know, there needs to be some way where you can't complete the game by putting in 5% effort, you know? Yeah, I mean, I, abs I absolutely agree with you. I, I think that, <clears throat> like, one of... The, it's, it's like comparing apples and oranges, you know, but you're, we, we were playing through Shadow of Mordor um, as well in these round of videos, and with that game, if you don't start using some of the abilities you've upgraded to, you're going to have a really, really tough time getting through the game. And, you know, I... I I don't say, I don't think I was deep level with the combat, but I you know I got to a point where I was using the combat um, in a in a decently complex way, but I felt like once I'd figured out like four or five combinations that worked for me, there was not a lot of reason to switch off of them because they were working against everything. Yeah. You know there were certain like bigger like the boss enemies I believe there were certain times where you had to kind of change up your strategy a little bit. Not you know not all attacks worked against them. Um, uh, and that's really my only complaint about the game because I, I love the atmosphere of the game. Um, you know, I, I love what the game is going for and the complexity it's trying to give you. And the old school nature of playing a game over and over and over again to master it, I think, is something that is not doesn't exist in all games anymore. So I, I, it, it's a really cool thing to, to be there. I also, you know, as frustrating as it could be sometimes, I didn't mind the, the penalty you know, kind of the penalty for losing, you know, having those powers kind of yeah. overloaded and not being able to use them for a little while. I thought that was, uh, I, I thought that was actually a, a, a pretty <clears throat> apt penalty for, for, you know, misusing your powers and, and doing the combat wrong. And I think it may have been their attempt to get people to use things differently. Yeah, I mean, in later in the, this is right now in my mind, this is, I think, my third playthrough. If I were to die, <laughs> it's going to take out, I think, two powers at a time, mm -hmm. and that I won't be able to access them for a while. So right. then you, you, you'd have to be really proficient in being able to use anything. Oh, I'm definitely going to die. <laughs> uh, I would, I'd have to be proficient in using all the other functions that 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 came into play. Right. I mean, I, I definitely I understand, and uh, and, and in, in some ways agree with uh, these guys are bastards. Oh yeah, um, these guys are the worst. 
agree with what you're saying in that I, I, I feel like it is, to me, it is near one of uh, the more perfect games I've played uh, this year. But I, I, I do understand com uh, about, uh, the complaints that you guys have about, you know, s keeping certain things um, not up front and, you know, uh, like Jackie was saying, like being able just to force your way through the game. Like it's, it's definitely something I understand, but for some reason this game just grabbed me like almost like nothing else this year. And I think for me it's it's less a matter of quality and less and more a matter of connection that I had to the game. You know, I didn't I didn't I didn't get a I didn't feel connected to the game. And that happens with games that are great for me. It's just games I just don't for some reason. Up oh, there we go. So I've lost all my health and I've lost Cull, which is my strongest attack. So for right now, that's gone. Until I get to a spot and I can pick something else to put in its place. One of the things I liked a lot about the freezing of the combat and this more turn-based stuff was was definitely the uh, the usage of the the power, but it was also the ability to get out of danger. Yeah. Quickly. Um, and I, there were times where you kind of put stuff together. You know, you line up your move so you can line up. I'm going to strike and then I'm going to move. And there were times hey. where it was sort of like, you know, this Anyone kind of <laughs> this kind of symphony of, of combat where you would be able to attack and move so quickly and it would and you know, you would dodge an enemy attack at the perfectly the right time, you know, because there it's an enemy you were used to facing a lot. And I, I kinda of loved when those things would come together, I would love it. But I always felt like I was uh, I felt a lot of the time that I wasn't getting there, and that's just my own Skill level problem more than more than the game's fault. Uh, right now, I have set up uh, on my moves um, later in the game, especially at this difficulty, it'll get difficult. So what I did was I set up uh, the ability to stop time, but also the uh, the ability to go invisible. Oh, nice. So I would purposely use this when I was waiting for my super to uh, my stop motion ability mm -hmm. uh, to recharge. Plus, by doing that, uh, but doing it this way, you get extra damage for being invisible when you attack. Now, if there was 50 guys on the screen, I'd be waiting for that to recharge, so I'd be using invisibility at this point right. to, you know, stay alive. So, I mean, this is basically Transistor, you know, in a nutshell. For, uh, for me, I mean, I, I talked about the combat, talked about the music, talked about the way the game looks, and it's got an interesting story. I mean, for all of its faults, it's definitely, for me, at least, has all of those things together. Mm -hmm. Which is one of the few games, that you, uh, for me, one of the few games this year that had so many of those things together. Right, absolutely. Um, we're not near any of the cutscenes right now, are we? I don't remember. It's been a little bit since I played, but I don't think... Think yeah, I don't so. think so either. Um, they are gorgeous. They're gorgeous. I want to let me see, show it off. Let me see if I can... Uh, let's see. Retry. Where will this put me? Okay. Now. Is there no way to get back to the menu? I, this was... Uh, <laughs> setting. Do this. Let's start a new game. Is it gonna do that? Just erase all your data? So I've beaten the game three times. It's all right. Okay. <laughs> I would have just started crying if that was. <laughs> <laughs> so this is actually the beginning of the game. So let's let let's like be quiet for a second. Let people listen. We need to hit X. Oh, okay. Hey, Red. We're not gonna get away with this, are we? Come on, pull. There. Oh, it's actually it, it, it's the right first... in. I forgot it goes right into the gameplay. It gets right into gameplay. Sort of. But I mean, you can see the the art style of, of, of that still, and that's kind of the art style that exists in all the cut in scenes. all the cutscenes. Yeah. And it's gorgeous it's... art, um, really moody. Yeah, really moody, uh, really nice, and the way that it kind of uh... oh no, oh, it's still there. Still there. Okay, 
and and uh, I love actually also love the way it transitions from place to place, which is kind of on the motorbike. Like, yeah, I love the way that stuff looks. Um, Super Giant, the developer is you know they're amazing at the, at the art and stuff. So I uh, just want let people to see that. But it's really a game you need to play, I think, to really get because I think even when they were showing it off before it came out, I mean I was excited about it because obviously it looks beautiful, but the, the real feeling, the sense of, is really in the play. You know, you can watch something like Shadow of Mordor or, or Destiny, and you you can kind of get a sense of, of the game just by watching it. I think, but I don't think you can get that by watching um, the Transistor. And in the beginning, as you see here, they're kind of they're kind of giving me the points of uh, a, a tutorial in a way of letting me know, you know, uh, what to do, which is nice that they they mm -hmm. they showed at least this much. So, yeah. I don't think it was a problem of tutorializing how to do the combat. I just think it was giving you a gameplay reason to extend yourself. Yeah, that's exactly what we were saying earlier about Des well, we talked about Destiny with fusion rifles. It's whether you want to play the game to its potential or whether you want to win. Uh, and it needs to force you to want to play it how it needs to be played. Yeah. I mean, and it's the thing of like accommodating all players in all styles. You know, in, in a way, which it's tough for some games. And the game goes for a certain style and a certain, you know, and a certain player. And I think that's great because I think it nails what it's going for. Just a matter if you connect to it or not. But it's definitely a game that should be played and should be experienced. And if you play it, it's not going to take you that long anyway to, to get through it one no, more playthrough. I think it was uh, five hours. Yeah, something like that. Five or six hours five for me. Five or six I hours. Think. Yeah. But, uh,. That's Transistor. Best game of the year. <laughs> I don't think it's going to win, Justin. I'm, I'm going to go to bat. Uh, I'm preparing a speech. Okay. I'm preparing not to listen to that speech and vote for Shadow <laughs> oh, of Mordor. Don't be, don't be Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that is another one of Talking Games Game of the Year lookbacks, Transistor. Uh, thank you, Justin. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Check out our other Game of the Year videos and go to TalkingComicBooks.com and check out the Talking Games podcast. All right, guys. See you later.